What is up everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? Today is Friday. It is March 29th and it is about 2.01 p.m. afternoon time. You know, I gotta tell you guys, I'm in a real shitty mood. I am not in a good mood at all. And it has nothing to do with anything VR. It doesn't have anything to do with VR365. It doesn't have anything to do with YouTube or AdSense or any of that other crap. Um, it's completely unrelated to anything. It's like off the field type shit basically is what it is. But God damn, I'm in a bad mood. But you know what? Got to do the show got to do the show and so it is what it is i gotta do it and i just gotta move on and live with it and that's the way it is all right so what is the first story of the day um well the other thing i'll say as well too this will be a bit of a shit show okay so i scrambled and got some topics i do have some clips of jason rubin a recent jason rubin interview where he had some really interesting things to say about some interesting questions, and I thought it was pretty good. And so I, I took a few snips of that video, that interview that Ben Lang did with Jason Rubin, and we can talk about some of that stuff. So I do have that. We also have some other things to get into as well, but it could be a bit of a shiz show. And then also, I've got an extremely short fuse today. Not in a good mood at all. So if somebody triggers me in chat, this show could be over within a matter of minutes. All right. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The first story that we have to get into today is we have a correction, a major correction. In fact, I kind of feel like a complete and utter idiot, but let's go ahead and do Let's go ahead and do this. Um, so here's this game. It's called Observation. Do you guys remember... Like, was it yesterday or the day before? I forget which day it was where I showed two different trailers of this game. I was talking about the developer No Code and talking about how they've got members from Creative Assembly, from Rockstar North, and from Rocksteady. And this is going to be an exciting game. And I can't believe this is like a VR game that I never heard about. And, oh my God, you know, this looks so freaking cool. Guess what, guys? I found out this is not a VR game. This is not a VR game. This game has nothing to do with VR. And so you're probably wondering, well, Anthony, why did you think this was a VR game? How did you get twisted? And honestly, there's nobody to blame. Like, I have no blame to hand out for this. But I am going to blame Fluke Rogi, all right? I am going to blame Fluke, Fluke Rogi. And the reason why I'm going to blame Fluke is because, okay, so here's the deal. We've got a Discord server for VR 365. So, and there's an there's an invitation, an open invitation to anybody that wants to join our our Discord server for VR 365. It is in the show notes. You can click on that. As long as you're a member of Discord, bam, you can bounce over to our Discord server and it is all gravy. Okay, so anyway, we have this Discord server for VR365. There's a news section. There's a lot of different sections. You know, there's a bunch of different text channels. And so the other day we got bombarded with a million PlayStation VR games. I mean, not a million, but you know, that one day PlayStation state of game or state of play or whatever the hell they called it. We got the release dates for a lot of games. We got a couple of new VR games that we found out about. Iron Man VR, a couple, you know, No Man's Sky obviously was the big one, all of that. So we got this huge deluge, right, of PSVR games. Well, the next day, I was in the Discord server very late at night, um, about to get ready for bed, and I went into the news area, and I saw that Fluke had linked um, a thing about this game Observation. And I looked at it and I was like, oh man, another big PlayStation VR game. How did I miss this one? And I didn't even read like what Fluke said about it. He was talking something about Lone Echo, how it's very similar to Lone Echo or whatever. And I was like, oh, holy smokes, another big PSVR game. 
and I clicked on it and I watched the trailer and I was like, oh man, dude, this game looks freaking awesome. How did I not hear about this game? This is a major primetime PSVR game. This game, Observation, it's coming out on May 21st. Like, this is a big deal, right? Well, I freaking went to VRGameRankings.com and I actually added this game. I made a game profile page for it. I added it to the VR Game Rankings. Um, I added it to our rankings for most wanted PlayStation VR games and all this other stuff. And so then like a day goes by, right? And I I think I linked um, a link to the VR Game Rankings most wanted top 40 most wanted PSVR games. And this guy responded to it and said, hey, wait. Observation is a VR game? Since when? That game comes out on May 21st. I never knew it was a VR game. And then I was like, uh, I thought it was a VR game. It's not a VR game. And then so I started doing a quick, you know, some quick uh, investigation on this. And it's not a VR game. No wonder. No wonder nobody on the PSVR subreddit is talking about Observation. Like this big major game that is going to hit PlayStation VR. No one's talking about it. And the reason no one's talking about it is not a VR game. And so I guess the moral of this story, what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is there's flat games and people care about them. How weird is that? People care about pancakes. I don't. I don't care about pancakes. I don't care about flat games. I don't care about Anthem. I don't care about Destiny 4. I don't care about Crackdown 5. I don't give a damn about God of War or any other flat game. They can all get somewhere because I don't care about them. And But I guess I got to remember there's other people in the world. There's these things called other people. And I guess they still care about flat games. And so I'm in a VR365 Discord and I it never even dawned on me. Like I never, it never even popped into my head that somebody might link a news story to a flat game. Like I care about a flat. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade at Fluke. And, you know, he was the reason in retrospect, I know exactly why Fluke put that into our news because he saw a trailer of it or whatever. And he thought, wait a minute, this is just like Lone Echo. It's amazing how close the similarities are to Lone Echo. And that's why he threw it, he throw he put it in our news section. But I just immediately went off the rails thinking, oh, here's another major VR game. Oh my God, I got to scramble. I got to get a game profile page up for this. I got to get this ranked in my top 40 most wanted PlayStation VR games. Oh my God, this is so great. And I spent all that time talking about it. You guys must have been watching it thinking, what the hell is wrong with Anthony? Does he know something we don't know? This is not a VR game. So anyway, I didn't mean to spend 10 minutes on that, but I did. I did spend 10 minutes on that. Um, so yeah, it was a complete and total mistake there. And I guess that type of shit happens. But what I really need to do is when somebody hits me up about a certain game, I guess I actually have to make sure that it's actually a VR game. Who could have possibly imagined that? I've got to make sure that it's actually a VR game. Okay, so what we're going to get into today is the Jason Rubin Chronicles. Okay, the Chronicles of Riddick, the Jason Rubin Chronicles. So Jason Rubin is in the news a little bit based on some interviews that he's had with um, some different outlets. Number one, which is Road to VR, Ben Lang, interviewed Jason Rubin. I talked about this yesterday, and I recommend anybody out there, you want to watch this interview in its entirety, okay? Because there's a lot of good information, I think, that comes out of this interview. And you kind of get into the headspace of what Oculus is thinking about with all of this. And I, I thought that's very good. Now, there's other interviews with Jason Rubin besides the Ben Lang one. There's another one. And I think it might be like by, by like a German dude. And he says a lot of the same things, but it's a different interview. And that one's worth checking out as well. But I only have some clips from the Road to VR one. But basically, why don't we go ahead and get into this? Let's, let's take a look at some of these Jason Rubin clips and let's talk about them. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pump up the volume on AstroBot here a little bit, uh, this little AstroBot mix. And we're gonna go ahead and check the first uh, Jason Rubin uh, clip. So let's go ahead and grab the first one here. Yeah, there's a cost to everything that a company does. And while there might have been some people we'd make very happy with a uh, much higher resolution screen or something along those lines, some group of people would have to prototype that device. Some group of people would have to deal with the supply chain for that device. Some group of people would have to deal with you know, hard, you know, warehousing, shipping, and everything else. And those people, when you can only have a company of a certain size, we can't grow infinitely, those people would be taken away from the other things we're working on. So everything that we deal with is trade-offs. And there will always be somebody who thinks that there's a better trade-off that they could manufacture. I can tell you, sitting around the room, these are hard discussions, but I think we've made the right trade-off with where we are right here. Okay, so that was Jason Rubin. And basically, Ben Lang was asking him, he was saying, well, you know what? The Rift S makes sense, but why not make a Rift Pro for the hardest of the hardcore? That way, you have the Rift S for general population, and then you have the Rift Pro for the hardest of the hardcore. And then Jason Rubin responded to that, and he talked about how every decision a company makes is trade-offs, that there's realities to this thing. He's you got to have people that prototype it. You got to have people that test it. You got to have people that support it. You need an entire chain of people for a new product to bring a new product out. It's not as easy as you think of just like, oh yeah, let's just add another skew. It's no big deal. So he kind of was speaking to that. And here's one of the quotes from that. He says, there will always be somebody who thinks that there's a better trade-off that they can manufacture. I can tell you, sitting around the room, these are hard discussions. But I think we made the right trade-off with where we are right here. And that's Jason Rubin. And you know what? I kind of understand where he's coming from from this angle. In fact, honestly, this is the type of response I would have here for people that always talk about Windows Mixed Reality and the Xbox. Like whenever I start talking about Xbox and VR, people are like, all Microsoft has to do is just flip a switch. They flip a switch and then all the Windows Mixed Reality headsets will work on Xbox One X and everything is fine. And Xbox instantly has a VR headset, hip hip hooray. No, this is what I'm talking about here. This is what you people don't understand. You people, God damn it, you people. No. <laughs> But but seriously, though, this is something that you got to understand. You don't just flip a switch. There has to be product managers. There has to be a testing department. There has to be evaluation. Things have to be tested. Um, you have to have support. It's an entire thing. You don't just flip a switch. And so that's what Jason Rubin, he's talking about why there isn't a Rift Pro for the hardest of the hardcore. I thought it was an interesting question that Ben Lang asked. I thought it was a pretty good question. And I thought the response was pretty good. Things that people don't think about. There's trade-offs. They sit around a room and they think, we want to add this, we want to add that, we want to add this, we want to add that. But everything that they're adding, there's a price for that. And so they have to make hard decisions. Things are scrapped. Some people are fighting for, oh my God, I really want 140 degree field of view. But another person is like, yeah, but I want to keep the price low. The price really needs to stay low. These are the trade-offs that you're thinking about when it happens with this. Okay, let's go to our next clip. That's one of the one, we've got four different clips to go through here. Let's go to clip number two. The other question is, what is Rift 2? If I go around a table of 10 Rift users and ask them, what are you missing? Some would say things that we've added here, like higher resolution, which doesn't break the ecosystem. Other people would say things like wireless, which might not break the ecosystem, but fights against higher resolution. Another person might say, I want full body tracking. Well, that does break 
the ecosystem, right? Because that's not something you can just easily add. That's going to add back some external sensor or some complicated additional thing that you have to ship probably sends the price up. As you go around that table of Rift users, what you're gonna find out is what's really needed is a three or $4,000 device that has all of the features that they want at the same time. You know from Rift, you don't wanna sell even an $800 system, let alone a multi-thousand dollar system. Okay, yeah, so this was a good point that he made, and this was right after he had just talked about that other quote. This was the next major point he made. And what he kind of talked about here is like, what is a Rift 2? And, and he talks about if you were to take a bunch of hardcore Oculus fans, like from the, from the subreddit, right? You take some of the hardest of the hardcore Oculus fans, you sit them around a table, and you say, okay, what is it you want from a Rift 2? One guy's like, hey, I want a gigantic FOV. I want 140 degrees or more. You ask another guy, I want 2160 by 2160 per eye. You ask another guy, they say, oh man, no, eye tracking is the key. Eye tracking is the absolute key. Another person wants foveated rendering. Another person wants uh, a pen tile display or RGB stripe or deeper blacks or uh, all these different things, right? That we all want these different things. And he's saying what's really needed is a three or $4,000 device that has all the features they want at the same time. And he's saying, we know from Rift, we don't want to sell even an $800 system, let alone a multi-thousand dollar system. So again, this speaks to the trade-offs. This speaks to the trade-offs that are made. We can't, unfortunately, have everything. And yeah, Facebook has crazy money. They have unlimited amounts of money. We know this. But they're not just they're not going to make a product that will satisfy 20,000 people that does nothing for them that's one of the downsides actually of having a gigantic company like facebook buy out oculus 20,000 people don't mean dick they don't mean dick to them that's the unfortunate truth there might be 20,000 hardcore riff fans that want 2160 by 2160 we want foveated rendering we want eye tracking we want a builder a bigger fov but there's only 20,000 of us and that's not enough to pay for that entire ecosystem it's not going to happen so more interesting comments here from jason rubin okay let's get into number three here Let's get to the third take of Jason Rubin. VR is going to keep progressing. So beyond any shadow of a doubt, at some point, we will have a next generation uh, where we add some sort of feature that breaks all the old stuff and makes it either not work or makes it seem obsolete. Okay, this is really interesting to me. I thought this was really, really interesting because so you got to understand what he's saying here. At some point, we will have a next generation where we add some sort of feature that breaks all the old stuff and makes it either not work or makes it seem obsolete. Okay, what is he talking about here? What he's talking about here is he's talking about that eventually they're going to have a feature that basically breaks their entire freaking ecosystem and you you pretty much have to throw all the bullshit away and it's a whole new ball game like it's it's a new rift store everything's new in fact not only that it could be a situation where your entire back library of oculus rift games like the previous oculus rift games for whatever reason those games may not translate to this new system i don't know they go you know verifocal lenses or whatever all these things um, there could be some kind of feature that they bring to the mix where all the old games just basically poof, you know? And, and that's a harsh thing to do. And that's a cutoff that is going to happen at some point that breaks everything before it. It's kind of like when you go to, it's kind of like the console manufacturers. If they go to a completely different architecture, they can't have backward support. They break everything but but they have to do it. They have to cut the umbilical cord. They have to move on to the future 
and it's a harsh reality. There's going to be a point where that happened or where maybe it doesn't break everything, but maybe it makes everything seem like totally worthless. You know, we, we get to this new level. And so every game that came before, you don't even want to play it anymore because it doesn't feature these new enhancements. It doesn't work with very verifocal lenses or whatever kind of different technology that's being added to it. I thought that was really interesting. I don't, he also talked about like, um, body tracking, like full body immersion tracking and how that might break everything. I don't see how that will break everything. I do understand how that is another component that is being added to the mix and that this other component could raise the prices and everything, but I'm not sure that it breaks all the old stuff. But I still found that comment very interesting that we could have a cutoff point coming at some point in the future where they have to make a dramatic change and it kind of invalidates everything before. And that's going to be very painful. That's like ripping off a Band-Aid and it's a Band-Aid a lot of people don't want to rip off. Okay, now here is the last Jason Rubin uh, comment that I wanted to get into here and then we'll go ahead and move on from this. Let's get into this last comment. What I will say about the VR business is we've turned a corner on one of the most important things, which is making it easy to get in and out. Will these devices get lighter? Yes. Will they get uh, better screens? Yes. Will they get better form factors? Yes. But these devices and these ecosystems are a pivot towards the future and towards getting into a mass market of VR. And I still believe this is going to happen. It's going to happen in either an exponential curve or it's going to happen in a hockey stick. You can either predict what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. You can't do both. And I'm not going to take a shot at how long it's going to take for it to be mass market. But I do believe when you look at an exponential change very locally, nothing changes. Over a longer time, more changes. If you look at the three years since Rift launch, very different device. Standalone device with everything in a box, six degrees of freedom, very big change. Extrapolate that out four or five years, massive differences are coming. VR is going to happen. VR's gonna happen. It is a train that has left the station, baby. Um, but yeah, so one of the quotes he has here, and this was kind of at the very beginning of that comment there, he says, we've turned a corner on one of the most important things, which is making it easy to get in and out. And that is huge. That really is huge. That's, that's honestly the reason why I believe the Oculus Quest is such an incredibly key product for our entire VR ecosystem. I mean, it really is so key because friction is such a major problem. He's also talking a little bit about the Rift S there because in, in some of his other um, discussions with Ben Lang, he talked about, you know, sometimes you got like an hour to play and you're like, oh, but my sensors aren't set up right. And I, I was watching that and I was like, what? Uh, your sen you set up your sensors one time and then you're pretty much done. I mean, I know there's there might be some people out there that every time they play VR, they got to get their sensors out and set them in a certain spot. That would really suck. If you're in that situation, absolutely run out and buy yourself a Rift S because that would suck to have to set up stuff each time. There's no way in hell I could ever do that. But most people will set up stuff and it's just there. So it's not so much... For me, getting in and getting out is more about the Oculus Quest, in my opinion. But he also talked about VR, and he talked about the curve, and he said it's going to be an exponential curve over time, slowly but surely, or it's going to be a hockey stick. And a hockey stick is like, sh and then it shoots straight up, right? Hockey stick goes like that, and then bam, it just shoots up like a freaking rocket. And an exponential curve is like slowly but surely works its way up. And in regards to all of that, I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. It is going to be a bit of a slow burn, but at some point we're going to have the right product at the right price with the right content where I think it could shoot exponentially out of control and just be pretty incredible. There was another thing that he said in that comment that I forgot to mention, uh, one aspect of it that made me kind of chuckle, but now I don't even remember what it was. But anyway, that is Jason Rubin. He's talking about kind of the new situations that are going on with Rift S, with um, 
Oculus Quest, and all these different things. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to just go ahead and uh, I'm going to put it on a different trailer temporarily here. Uh, we'll just do the uh, Robo Recall screenshot, right? I'll put this on this for a second. I just wanted to see if there were any comments to some of the stuff that Jason Rubin has been saying that we've looked at here. Okay, going back, um, Paradise Decay says, did everyone see Mike's Rift S video? Uh, talking about virtual reality oasis he was quite pleased with it yeah I saw well actually I didn't see that I listened to it today while I was at work I listened to it and it appears that most of his issues were dealt with um, shaking of the head you know that was one thing that there's a problem there um, but another one other thing we might want to consider with all these people that are being flown to Boston and they're being put up in the finest hotels, <laughs> you know, the, the Chilean sea bass, right? So they're being flown to Boston, they're being put up in hotels. And now I don't believe consciously they have a bias. Like I don't believe Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis, I'm not saying he's bought and paid for by Oculus or Cass and Cherry or Ty Tyrell Woods or any of the other people that have been flown to Boston and put up in hotels by Oculus and everything, I don't believe they have a conscious bias. I don't believe they are Oculus shills, but there's an unconscious bias. There's a subconscious bias. And I guarantee you, if I if they flown if they flew me out to Boston and put me up in the freaking four seasons. I'm going to have an unconscious bias. Now, consciously, I'm going to be like, I don't care. Yeah, they flew me out here, but I'm going to be as hardcore as I can be. But unconsciously, there's a bias. It's human nature. We are still human beings at the end of the day. And so you kind of got to be careful with some of these opinions here. I'm not saying, again, I'm not trying to talk smack and saying that these people are bought and paid for. They're not. But unconsciously, there's a reason that these developers do these things. There's a reason that developers will fly people to Hawaii and have a freaking conference in Hawaii. And they're like, yeah, well, they flew us, they flew us there, but I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be um, biased towards what they're doing. They did fly me to Hawaii, but I will not let that weigh in my decision. But it's impossible. You're human. And subconsciously, unconsciously, it is going to leak into your decision. But I did feel like his video was good. I felt like he was fair with everything that he talked about. And it was a pretty good breakdown there. The shaking of the head part, you know, where he was wobbling his head, that is a concern for certain games possibly. It, it, any headset that has a halo design, you're going to have those kinds of concerns if you're shaking your head really crazily style. Like Dance Central, I mean, if you were dancing really, really crazy, it, it might be a little bit better to have that baseball cap strap type of situation there. But yeah, Paradise Decay was talking about that video. Um, Jarillo says, cry me a river. Jason Rubin puts on Vipro with wireless adapter and prescription lens inserts on a 1080 Ti. Eat my shorts. I'm not sure what he's talking about there. Uh, let's see. Um, the, Ocul the Oculus Rift, yeah, but edition. That's eight. Adam checking in, Golden State Warrior fan. Um, virtually actual says that was a great interview, but three to four thousand. Come on, man. Well, you know, think about Star VR. Like, think about the Star VR headset. It has pretty much almost everything that we want, right? And it's about four or five thousand. So if you really wanted to do absolutely everything that we wanted to, you are going to get into kind of the thousands of dollars. And Ken L sixty six says, "I saw Mike's video. He nitpicks about audio and headset wobble." Yeah, the audio too. The audio, you're not really going to want to use the built-in audio unless you got a soundproof room, okay, with no outside noise whatsoever, and you just don't want to put on the headsets. That could possibly work. Um, let me see here. Um, got a lot of background noise going on right now. Here, I, I wish I had some uh, soundproof room right here. Um, so Crunchy says, has Lone Echo or Echo Combat been teased on the Rift S? Been tested. Has Lone Echo or Echo Combat been tested on the Rift S? No. I think you're probably going to have to actually buy a Rift S 
basically the Rift S is going to have to be available before anybody's going to be able to test that out because those games probably do show the um, imperfections of that tracking idea more so than any other game out there. And so it's kind of a, that's that's a factor. Jarillo says, Jason Rubin needs to lay off Beat Saber and Krieg Boxing. His shirt is about to snap off his ripped chest. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he might work out a little bit, I guess. Um, so we're scrolling down here. Okay, Paradise Decay says VR365. So Anthony, do you think you might have the same bias when you get keys? Absolutely. Absolutely. I Without question, I'm going to tell you right now. Anytime I'm given a key, I have an unconscious and a subconscious bias. I do. It's human nature. And anybody that says they don't, you're first of all, there's a difference between a conscious bias and an unconscious bias. Those are two completely different things. I don't have a conscious bias when these people give me keys, but do I have an unconscious bias? Yes, I do, because I'm not an effing robot. I'm a human being. And these companies that give out keys and that VR covers, you know, they send a thing to you, they send this to you. Pimax, when Pimax sends a Pimax headset to Nathy, are they doing it out of the kindness of their hearts? Are they doing it 100% just to get coverage on Nathy's channel? They're doing that, but they're also doing it because of unconscious and subconscious influencing is going on. We are human beings, okay? Until you actually have robots standing up here, AI robots that are doing these shows that cannot be influenced on a subconscious level, yeah, yeah, I, I do. I get keys, and it affects me. But you guys saw me rip into that game. What was that game? Uh, Singularity 5? I've ripped into games before, okay? I've had small developers give me keys, and I didn't like their game, and I had to say it. I'm pretty much straight up, but as straight up as I am, and I feel like I'm one of the more straight up people in the VR game on YouTube. I really do feel like I am. But as straight up as I am, unconsciously and subconsciously, does it affect me? Hell the F yes, because I'm also human. Okay, um, scrolling down here. Anthony doesn't have a bias when he gets keys, but by the way, buy Final Assault. Buy, 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 buy. Exactly. One of the five best games of 2019. Have you not bought Final Assault yet? What is wrong with you? Oh, by the way, I got three codes to give away for Final Assault. Um, so yeah, I'm just, you know, this is reality, guys. This is reality. This is the way it works. There, it, None of these free things are given away for shits and giggles. They're given away because they know it works. They know it works. These companies know it works. And they're going to continue to do that because it works. And, it, and it's, it would be crazy for them not to give these things away. Okay, um, I'm just throwing on a different trailer so we can have a different trailer on. Um, okay, what should we go do now? Okay, actually, you know what? There's another great topic, another rantable topic. But before we do that, let's go to the Oculus Daily Deal because I keep forgetting to do the Oculus Daily Deal. And speaking of being bought and paid for, Oculus sponsors our show. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. Okay, let's go to our webby browser. So let's go over here to the webby browser. That's observation, a major mistake that I made. Absolutely no question about it. Um, but let's talk about the daily deal of the day. And so the Oculus Rift daily deal of the day, Angry Birds VR, Isle of Pigs, Shockers of Shockers. This game has not been available for all that long, and it is already a daily deal. So we're probably getting 20% off, 25, 33% off, no 13% off. Okay, so yeah, the normal price for Angry Birds, Isle of Pigs, 15 bucks. Now you can get it for $13. You can save yourself $2. And with that $2 savings, you could support my Patreon or shoot it to me via, uh, what is it called? PayPal. Yeah. PayPal, Patreon. They start with P's. Pay me, baby. Pay me. PayPal and Patreon. You save two bucks, pass it on to me, ladies and gentle bots. That's Angry Birds VR, Isle of Pigs, which also has been confirmed for the Oculus Quest. And I think that game will work very well on the Oculus Quest. 
considering it's not necessarily a graphical powerhouse. Okay, what else did I want to get into? So let's go back over here to our standard scene. And actually, I have an image that I wanted to talk about real quick. So let me go ahead and throw this image on the screen. And it's this image right here. And this is in the HTC Vive subreddit. And I saw this and I thought it was pretty interesting. Okay, this is a guy at a college where he has a sign set up and it's like, da 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 da, change my mind. Okay, so this is kind of like a meme that's going around college campuses. And so you can scrub it out and put whatever you want on there and make a little funny thing, right? And so that's what this one guy did. And he says, Oculus S is a peer nightmare that HTC will fail to capitalize on. Change my mind. And I'm like, bravo, bravo, bravo. What a great job. What an absolutely great job because I could not agree more. HTC Vive. Okay, look, I know you guys, like some of you guys already think this is it right here. I hope, I hope not, but I bet so. And you can see how much this has been upvoted. 723 upvotes, 172 comments. Cryptomon is the guy that did this one and great job. And you know what? We can talk about HTC for a minute here because is there any company on planet Earth that has taken the least advantage of the situations that have been just dropped right into their laps. What the hell is going on with HTC? All these different kerfuffles happen. There's no good headsets at the right time. You got this Oculus Rift thing that's going on with the Rift S. People complaining about IPDs. People complaining about, you know, the resolution bump is minuscule. It's not that big of a deal. And you would think with all of this stuff going on, of course, HTC is going to seize the day. They're going to seize the day, right? They're going to take advantage of this incredible opportunity by dropping a ton of Vive Cosmos information out there, hammering us with a Vive Cosmos message, and they're going to take advantage of this situation, right? And they're not going to look back. No, they're not. They don't take advantage of anything. What is going on with HTC? They've had the same busted ass Vive Wands for all these years. What is going on over there? Come on, HTC. You've had opportunities to take advantage and you haven't taken advantage of squat. I don't understand this. Um, okay, so let's see if some anybody's talking about that. Uh, they're talking about mashed potatoes, a lose-lose situation. Um, Chris Richardson says, but it's only a PR nightmare to us. Oh, yeah. So, Chris, are you saying there's only 20,000 Oculus nutcases that consider this a PR nightmare, but the general public, the unwashed masses, yeah, the great unwashed. It's the great unwashed. I love that phrase, too. Is there a better phrase then the great unwashed, the great unwashed. I really love that. Um, HTC is another company that has no idea what's important on a VR HMD. That is Ken L66. Well, I'll say it's another company that never takes advantage of the freaking shit that is being placed right in front of them. In fact, you could say the same thing for Pimax too, though. Look at the opportunity. Now, this may have been a little bit before Rift S got announced because now most of the Oculus fanboys have calmed down. They've calmed the F down. They've come back to reality, especially with all those YouTubers there now that are like saying, oh, it's all good. Everything's good. So they're calming back down. And most of these people are going to buy a Rift S. Most of them are going to buy a Rift S. They're going to swallow their pride. They're going to buy a Rift S. But prior to the Rift S, there was a window, a, a massive window of opportunity for Pimax, for HTC. I don't even want to mention Valve because Valve never takes advantage of any kind of window like that. Valve operates in their, they're in their own private little world, basically, Valve. Um, but there was an opportunity. We don't have a headset that delivers everything that we've really wanted it to deliver or even like even comes close to delivering what we want 
out of a VR headset. The opportunity was there. Did HTC take advantage of it? No. And the crazy thing about HTC too is they've they've been blessed. They've been put into this situation. They're a random company that Valve happened to pick. And they've been put in the most blessed situation possible to have been picked by Valve to start this whole VR thing off. And Vive is a known commodity. The HTC Vive is a known thing. Like people in flat gaming world, they know what the Vive is. They know it because it's Vive and Oculus, Vive and Oculus, Vive and Oculus. It's Coke and Pepsi. It's Coke and Pepsi. Rift and Vive, Oculus, HTC. We know them. They have name recognition. Have they taken advantage of the name recognition? No, they've squandered everything. Why have they squandered everything? And we just got the Vive ecosystem conference, right? We were waiting on that. It was like, okay, let's wait. Let's wait for the Vive ecosystem conference. Surely HTC would show up at GDC and they would show off the Vive Cosmos and generate some hype there. No. Surely they would go to PAX East and they would generate some hype for the Vive Cosmos there. No, surely they would do this Vive ecosystem conference and finally give us an info dump on everything that's going on with all the different Vives. No, they did none of the above. None of the above. The only thing that's going on in the HTC world is the fact that the Vive Pro I has been approved by the FCC, yada, yada, yada. Not a big deal. We know this thing is going to be redonkulously expensive. There's not much that have been been added to this. Like, is anybody like hyped for the Vive Pro I? I am way more hyped for Vive Cosmos than I am for the Vive Pro I because I know there's a possibility that the Vive Cosmos is 2160 by 2160 each eye. That's better than this Vive Pro I. This Vive Pro I is an enterprise thing. And it has some nice little features that kind of help for certain things. But other than that, it's it's a non-starter as far as I'm concerned. HTC has dropped the ball like none other. They've had a golden opportunity. There's going to be another VR company that is going to come out of the blue. And they're going to snatch all of this because all these people are just dropping the goddamn ball. But yeah, that is the uh, little topic I wanted to get in there about what that guy was saying about HTC capitalizing on the Rift S kerfuffle. Okay, uh, what else can we talk about? Well, one other thing I wanted to talk about is the Oculus Quest and the battery life. So here's an interesting little story. I think you guys have already heard me talk about this before. I was at GDC, right? I told this to MRTV. I told this to Sebastian. We were there, we did a show, and we were talking about the battery life of the Oculus Quest. And I was joking, I was joking with Sebastian, telling him that there was a guy in an Oculus t-shirt that told me that the Oculus Quest would last four to six hours. And that immediately upon him telling me that, I immediately assumed that the guy had no effing idea what he was talking about. And I thought, there is no way in hell. That is impossible. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's like one of those employees at GameStop that says, Oh yeah, PlayStation 5 is coming out and it's going to launch with Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah, yeah, Sony bought Rockstar. And you know what? It's going to have Mario too. Sony bought... Sony bought Nintendo. You didn't hear about that? There's always like a goofball at GameStop that will tell you all kinds of crazy, wrong, incorrect stuff. And I thought that's what this guy was doing when he told me four to six hours. Little do I know. Little do I know that Voodoo DE played an Oculus Quest for four straight hours and the battery still has 50%. So this thing lasts for eight hours. Okay, no, 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 no. We're getting this a little bit skewed. Now, what this does say is, so this guy says, so I just watched Voodoo D's live stream from PAX East and unfortunately, it's in German. Fortunately, I can understand a word or two. Some interesting bits, but one is almost too good to be true. At this point in the video, and he has a link to that, he explained that he had played four hours in one sitting and the battery the battery was still at over 50%. What the F? 
And then Haney555, our boy Haney, he was there, he delivered, and he says he has to have misspoken. That is simply not possible, you know? It's simply not possible. But it's funny, after reading all of this and hearing all of this, I was like, wait a minute, maybe that guy in the Oculus t-shirt wasn't out of his mind. Maybe, but no, there's no way, there's no way this could last four to six hours. I cannot believe it. But you know what? If he really did play, like if this guy Voodoo DE did play for a long time, I mean, the good news about it is if we get a solid, legit three hours, like I'm perfectly happy. If this thing lasts, if the Oculus Quest lasts for a solid three hours, even if I'm playing like Robo Recall or something for the entire three hours, that would be awesome. That would be super effing awesome if the Oculus Quest could last a solid three hours. I would be super happy with that because somewhere along the line, I heard somebody say two and a half to three hours unofficially. I don't know where I heard that. I can't remember where I heard that, but I absolutely heard that, that it was two and a half to three hours unofficially, but that they were still working on it and they were still trying to optimize the battery life and the power usage and all of that. Now, obviously, it's going to vary. It's going to vary based on what you're doing with the headset and all those sorts of things. But if it really lasts three hours, that is super awesome. Then it won't be that major Debbie Downer. Like, like it would be a huge Debbie Downer if it was like you got barely two hours. Like the Oculus Go is a bit of a Debbie Downer from in terms of its battery life. Because if you rip like a Blu-ray or something, a 3D Blu-ray, and you try to throw it on there, you might not be able to watch the entire 3D Blu-ray in the life of the Oculus Oculus Go, the normal battery, and that kind of sucks. So we really need three hours out of this thing. And I don't know about this four hours thing. I don't know that it's going to have eight hours of battery life or anything like that. But if it gets three to four, that's awesome. I'll live with that. I will deal with that. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else can we get into? Well, one other thing I did want to touch on real quick before we get out of here. Actually, wait. Let me t let me check chat and see what some people are commenting on. And a lot of people are talking about the goofy things that you hear at a GameStop. And yes, you do. Pseudo Soul says, Sony bought Nintendo. Confirmed. Um, and he says, Pseudo Soul says, maybe HTC did not drop the ball and they just don't care about the consumer space. Yeah, well, no, I mean, they dropped the ball regardless. Even if they don't care about the consumer space, they had a window of opportunity. See, the thing about HTC, and look, I know there's people out there that are hardcore HTC fans. You guys can't see it, but I have a box over there. It's an HTC box. I bought an H. I had an HTC Vibe before I had any of this crap. I am not an anti-HTC person by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I, the company has issues, but like the products, I like the HTC Vive. And I'm not, I'm not, I had a show called the effing Vivecast, okay? I had a show called the Vivecast. I used to be a Vive nut back in the day, back at like August 2016, right? So I'm not anti-Vive, but it, this might sound like I'm anti-Vive. See, the thing is, HTC Vive, there was a silver platter. Gabe Newell walked over to HTC like a waiter holding a silver platter out to HTC saying, here we hand you, we bestow upon you, HTC, the keys to the effing kingdom. We're signing with you. We're going to put our Valve logo on your shit. You're going to bring out HTC Vive. Pro You're going to bring out Vive products. You're going to be the guy that starts this whole VR thing. You're going to be that company. They gave it to him on a silver platter. Who is the Coke and Pepsi in VR? It's Oculus and HTC. That's what everybody says. Oculus Rift, HTC Vive. Oculus Rift, HTC Vive. That is priceless. It's priceless to have that kind of name recognition and to be a known value. And they stepped into that. They didn't earn it. 
They didn't do anything to earn it other than being in the right place at the right time and having the right connections and being willing to say, yeah, Valve, we'll do everything you want us to do. We'll be that hard hardware partner for you. I'm sure they weren't Valve's first choice. Valve probably went to other companies and other companies maybe said, ah, oh, we're good. And HTC was like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. So, I mean, they did that much, right? They did that much and they actually manufactured something. They made something. They came out with something. Their support has been god-awful, but, you know, they, they delivered a product. And they had so many opportunities to, like, really strangle some great market share. They're going up against a behemoth in Oculus that's spending millions upon millions, $500 million. You know, Oculus spent $250 million on all this different content. Another $250 million. Oculus pays $3 billion or damn near $4 billion, right? To, I mean, Facebook pays damn near $4 billion to buy Oculus. And HTC is almost as well known because they're the Pepsi to Oculus's Coke. Yet they haven't taken any advantage of that. Sure, sure. I know in China and I know in Asian markets, like I know they are the leader. They're the leader in the VR, like arcade market, the location-based entertainment market. Look, I know HTC's doing some things, but they had an opportunity that they failed to capitalize on, in my personal opinion. Okay, rant over. Um, okay, so the next thing I did want to get into is let's talk a little bit about recent releases because this is something I haven't covered for a while. There's been games that have been coming out. I'm going to go ahead and give this a brand new refresh here. And Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot, yeah, bruh. You know, they got a nice big advertisement there. Hey, whatever happened, by the way, I thought Bethesda... I thought Bethesda was going to have their own little private store. You know, everybody has their own private store. And I thought like Fallout 4 and Skyrim and Wolfenstein and all this. I thought all this stuff was never going to be on Steam or any other store. And it was going to be on this Bethesda store. But I guess not because Wolfenstein Cyberpilot, it's right there. Pre-purchase right now if you want. Doesn't come out until July 26. You can wait a little bit. But if you want to give them your money in advance so they can earn some interest on it, go right ahead. Okay, let's take a look at some of the most recent releases in the VR world. And one of the releases that I'm looking at here is The Morrigan. And I haven't heard anything about this. Now, this is developed by The Pixel Mine Limited. It's got one review. This released, oh, today, March 29th. I should probably try to email these guys. I might be able to get a code. And oh my God, if I get a code, then I'm going to say, this is the best game ever. You got to buy the Morrigan. If you don't buy the Morrigan, you got to be out of your mind. This is one of the five best. Oh, watch. They're going to take these quotes and be like, BR365 said the Morrigan was one of the five best VR games out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the Pixel Mine Limited, the Morrigan, it's out there. I, you know, we've talked about this game before. I showed a trailer for it. We looked at the Steam page. Graphically, you know, it looks a little bit Vanishing Realms ish. It also has kind of a little bit of a, a Minecraftian kind of look to it as well. I like that. You know, the, it looks kind of cool. It really does look kind of cool, but we haven't really heard too many people talking about talking about the Morrigan. But the Morrigan is out there; it is available, and um, you know you can grab it right now for eighteen dollars. Normal price is twenty. Uh, let's see what else has come out recently. Blood Trail. A lot of people have been talking about this one. Now you might remember we talked about this game one day as well remember it's basically the game where you brutally murder bald people with no shoes it's pretty much seriously you brutally murder bald people with no shoes okay so what does it say you are windig you are windigo you are windigo a hard a hard-hearted contract killer motivated only by a paycheck and tasked with annihilating a fanatical cult. With your trusted arsenal at the ready, experience what has been called the most violent game in VR. Okay, so they're leaning in. They're leaning into that. Electrovore is like, yeah, man, we've got the most violent game in VR. Have you ever wanted to do a crotch shot and just blow the living crap out of somebody's crotch? And they, they're not wearing shoes and they're bald. 
Haven't you ever wanted to do that? Everybody's had that fantasy. Like, hasn't everybody wanted to go on a murderous fantasy where all you do is attack bald people that don't have shoes? Blood Trail. It's available. 25 bucks. Um, it's out there for 20 You know what? This game, check this out, though. Violence pays. Violence pays, ladies and gentlemen, because look at this. Mostly positive, 140 reviews. This has only been available for a couple of days. It's got 140 reviews. So what does this tell the average developer out there? It says, blood and gore, baby. Blood and gore sells. People love the blood and guts. What's wrong with us Americans? Seriously. I, I got to assume that this is a lot of Americans buying this. What is wrong with our... Look at that, man. Come on. Just blowing people's heads apart. Like, really? But Blade and Sorcery, look at how popular Blade and Sorcery is. You get to stab somebody right into their eyeball so viscerally. Now you get to just create mush. You're basically making red oatmeal out of these people. I mean, you're just blowing the living crap out of them. But that hype has been able to earn them 140 mostly positive reviews. The developer here is Electrovore. Are they known for anything else at all? They made this game called Ballistic. This is February 20th, 2017. Does anybody know anything about this game? It's three bucks. Um, but this this company, you know, they are balling with Blood Trail. Bl blood and gut sales, I guess. I guess. I guess blood and gut sales. Because to me, I mean, I saw like the trailer and all of this. And to me, like, like not knowing anything, but just using my Nostradamus capabilities... I look at this and I say, this is kind of an indie-ass indie game, kind of amateur hour, but they really lean into the violence and the blood and all of that, and man, has it helped them out. But no, I mean, maybe this is an incredible game. Maybe I've got it all wrong. This is an awesome game. Anthony, you don't understand. Don't judge a book by its cover, man. This is a really good game, dude. Yeah, I know there's a lot of violence, bro, but it's actually a really good game. There's a lot of cool things about it. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Remember when I said at the beginning of this show that I am in a super bad mood and it wouldn't take almost anything to trigger me and send me off the deep end? And so I've kind of had a weird flow to today's show. Has anybody else noticed that? I've been a little bit more ranthony than normal. I, some people like it, though. Some people really love that. Space Junkies, of course, is available as well. And Final Assault. Don't buy that. Don't ever buy that. And don't ever buy Space Junkies either. These guys gave me codes, bruh. Don't ever buy something that gave me codes. Oh, Raid on the Roar? Uh, Paradise Decay has a video up for this. He tried this. This is... Um, it's made by the guys that did like Titanic and what other one did they do? They did the Titanic. Let's see. Immersive VR Education Limited. I know these guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. So these are the Apollo 11 guys and also Titanic VR. So this is their next thing. It's $6. It's called Raid on the Ruhr. I don't know. I might be mispronouncing that. And VR Roundtable. I believe that we were provided a code for this. So I need to check this out before Sunday for our next episode of VR Roundtable. I need to check this out so that I can comment on this. Again, I've been bought and paid for, so don't trust my views. But that is Raid on the Ruhr. It is out. Raid on the Ruhr. Ruhr, 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 Ruhr. Raid on the Ruhr. It is out there. It is available. All right. So why don't I go ahead and see what's... Let's go back to our standard scene. And uh, let's see what people are talking about in chat. Okay, so Hussein X says, yeah, Vive Q non-existent and Oculus Q busy. Pseudo Soul says, maybe HTC did not drop the ball. Okay, we've got that one already. Oh, I need to scroll down. These are old. I need to get back to where we are here. Okay, here we go. Um, Pseudo Soul says, my new VR game is going to be called Blood, Guts, and Babies. VR Spry Guy says, it's okay, Anthony. The violence isn't real. It's a game, brah. It's a game, brah. Well, yeah, but when you do get in VR, I've been in certain VR games and certain VR situations where you go up and stab somebody and there's something about like doing the actual motion. Like when you're in VR, I don't know. I think, I think violence like 
I'm okay with violence. Like, I'm not like an anti-violence guy. I'm not that guy. I really am not. But at the same time, I truly believe, like, I straight up, there's some people that don't think you can ever do anything to, like, go too far. I think you can. I think we could go way the fuck too far. And I think we are going to go way the fuck too far. And I think the government, like, is actually going to have to step in and legislate some stuff. Because we're going to get to photorealism. And we're going to have so much immersion in this shit where if you're playing like Blade and Sorcery or Blood Trail or something, when we get to the point where it's straight up photorealism, like photorealism, and you're like slicing open someone's belly and you're like grabbing their intestines and you're freaking yanking them out of their stomach. Like if you think that that isn't coming, it's absolutely coming and it's going to be a problem. I truly believe that. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, Crunchy says, so you kill the Agent 47 clones. Agent 47 doesn't wear shoes. He's kind of Palmer Lucky style. Didn't know that. Main fan says, I love oatmeal. Need to add red food coloring now. Main fan loves oatmeal. And I'm going to tell you why. Because main fan is a lifter, a bodybuilder exercise type. And they love the F out of oatmeal. Because oatmeal is carbs but they're slow burning carbs. Like a lot of people that are into like exercise and stuff like that, what they'll do is they'll oatmeal and peanut butter. Oatmeal and peanut butter is like their thing. Main fan, do you ever put peanut butter in your oatmeal? Because that is a popular thing. Okay, um, uh, Onakaze is talking to Zenovator. Oh, Zenovator is saying Morrigan would be nice on the quest. And Onakaze says at Zenovator says, first thing I thought to do is check if Morgan is on the Oculus store. No luck at all. Okay. Um, virtually Actual says, excellent time to release a violent game right after announcement of Rift S and ghosting us on release dates. Great way to vent. Um, let's see. Pseudo Soul says, I love violence, but I draw the line at killing bald people. Um, see, you know, the thing about the bald people thing, we need to understand why the bald people thing happened. Okay, it's not just bald people. Let's go back. Where uh, where were we here? Let's go back to our webby browser. Let's go back to the bald people killer. Um, bald people killer, the game, otherwise known as Blood Trail. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, Let's see if we can get a good shot of one of these character models because I believe these character models are identical. They're clones. So what they should have did, the story should have been, there was one guy, he cloned himself 57 times because basically the idea here is these devs sat around a table just like Jason Rubin sits around a table. There's trade-offs. These devs have trade-offs too. And they said, hey, how are we going to make a game where we don't have to spend much time making different character models? Oh, I know. We'll make it a fanatical cult. They, they're they bald, so we don't have to work. We don't have to design hair. And you know it's hard to make white people's hair any damn way in a video game. So there's no hair. There's no shoes. We don't even have to render shoes. And they can all look the same. We just give them slightly different colored t-shirts. But they all have the same weight, height, and everything else. Watch. I guarantee you. If you guys play Blood Trail, do you think one of these guys is going to be six foot five, and one of them is going to be five foot seven? Do you think one of them is going to be a big fatso with a bald head? And the other one's going to be like skin and bones? No, they're all the exact same character model, bruh. That's what they're doing here. It's the old okie doke. And you know what? Hey, it worked out. It worked for them. They've probably already made their money back off 140 people. <laughs> now, I don't know about that, but they're doing pretty well for themselves. People are talking about this blood trail. Okay, let's go back to our standard scene now. Um, and you know what? I'm pretty much out of show content for today. I've pretty much ran through what I wanted to run through. Um, but what we could do is we could take a quick look at, say, Upload VR, Road to VR, and kind of see what's going on. Paolo Triani says, yeah, he cloned 77 times and all of them went to sleep with his wife, so it's payback time. Okay, interesting. Uh, Fast Lawyer put up a video of the Morrigan. He was very positive, and I trust his reviews, but it looks a bit like VR Dungeon Night, a real polished game that no one talks about. Yeah, I heard uh, Ty Tyrell Woods, or Wood, I believe, 
Um, he was on the F Reality podcast last week, and he was talking about VR Dungeon Night. And there are so many little VR games that are out there that fly way under the radar. That happens all the time. Okay, so what I thought we could do, though, is let's take a look at some of the headlines real quick. So let's go back to the Webby browser. Let's see what some of the headlines are right now on some of these VR websites. Tokyo Kronos makes a case for VR visual novels with middling results. All right, if you're into that anime type of thing, get happy. Dreams Early Access won't have PSVR, but support is still planned. You know, somebody needs to jump on a grenade for the boys. Seriously, somebody like Kev Grett or somebody needs to jump on a grenade for the boys. When it comes to April 16th, go ahead and grab Dreams so you can let us know on the inside, is there anything you can do from a VR standpoint? I don't think there will be anything right away. But maybe during the early access period, they will allow something for VR. And, I mean, we're going to find out about it. It'll hit, it'll hit the uh, PSVR subreddit as soon as that happens. So I guess nobody really needs to jump on a grenade for the boys. But I do believe Dreams is going to have PSVR support eventually. Okay, The Tale of Lucky. This was actually editor's note. This was originally published on March 29th. 2016. Yeah, so this is like a three-year-old story that they decided to just go ahead and post again. And that's Blake Harris. He's the guy that, you know, wrote the book, right? Uh, the History of the Future. Borderlands 2. You know what? I have not mentioned this. Borderlands 2 is getting all the DLC. Borderlands 2 VR is going to get all the DLC for free on PSVR this summer. So a lot of good things are going on in PSVR world. In fact, if we were to go, let's go to the PSVR subreddit real quick because this one guy did a post and he was like, man, this has been a really good week for PSVR. And it's actually, he's pretty much right. He's pretty much right on the right on the money here. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, he says, pretty okay week. Pretty okay week for PSVR. No Man's Sky, Borderlands 2 DLC, Concrete Genie, Five Nights at Freddy's, Blood and Truth, Everybody's Golf in May, Falcon Age in about a week, over 4 million sold. Yeah, it's looking great. And Observation. Oh, no, not Observation. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's been looking damn good for PSVR. Things are looking really, really, really good for PSVR. So, yeah, you got to love it if you're a PSVR lover. Things are nice. Um, all right. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call it. Well, actually, let's see. Road to VR. Yeah, Skyworld Kingdom Brawl, a VR card battler. You want to talk about... I'm probably more interested in... One, I have more interest in like an anime game than a freaking card battler. All right? But I have almost no interest in either. But if I did, I'd probably rather go with one of those anime games than a VR card battler. Um, but yeah, those are some of the topics that are going on. All right, well, let's go ahead and go back to our standard scene. I'm about to get the hell out of Dodge. And it's afternoon time, time for my coffee. Time for my second cup of coffee of the day. Alrighty, guys, well, that's going to go ahead and do it for this particular episode of VR365. Yeah, I know I was a little bit crazy today, a little bit on edge. And like I said, coming into this show in a really, really bad mood, so it kind of made me go a little bit crazy during today's show. But you guys understand it. You understand what's going on here. This is what it's all about. This is what VR365 is all about. You never know what the hell I'm going to do. I could come up here and drop F-bomb after F-bomb. Or I could just throw my headphones down and say, F it, I'm out of here. Those things have happened on this show. They absolutely have. And if you'd like to see these crazy antics continue way off into the future, like an exponential curve, like a hockey stick, you know, if you want to make it like a hockey stick, support my Patreon or hit me up on PayPal. Because you know what? No super chats in my life. Google AdSense hates me. The, the English professor hates me. Google AdSense hates me. They won't let me get a super chat. They won't let me get a couple of bucks. I can't get a donut or a cup of coffee because super chat 
is not there for me. I don't get any money for anything on YouTube. I am not bought and paid for. I have no contracts with Oculus, HTC, Pimax, none of them. Have I ever been sent a free headset? No, never, never been sent a free headset. Um, and so I give the real raw digga. I give the raw digga is what I give. Okay, there used to be a rapper way back in the 90s called Raw Digga. But I give the real, the real deal. And so if you want to support that, and if you want to keep it happening for the long-term future, like an exponential hockey stick, hook me up, man. Patreon, PayPal. I can tell you this, the more Patreon supporters I get and the more PayPal donations I get, the harder it will be for me to walk away and never come back. And the lower Patreon supporters I get and the lower PayPal donations I get, the easier it is for me to just say, F it, I'm done. I'm done. I'll just be a civilian. I can just play Fallout 4 all day. How awesome would that be? I could come home from work and not have to like bust my ass and make this show. I could just throw on Fallout 4 and just play for four hours and not have to think about anything else. That would be incredibly awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I will be back tomorrow around noon Pacific time. Okay. It might interfere with somebody else's show. When does England like get the message that we've gone to daylight savings time? When does that happen in the UK? Because I think my show might conflict with F reality, which kind of sucks because I actually am interested in F reality. I listen to F reality now, guys. I'm back at work. I need podcasts. I really do. You know what sucks? I'm, so here's the longest outro you guys have maybe ever seen. This is probably the longest outro you've ever seen, right? Um, so I'm back at work now, although kind of part-time, but I am back there. And I listen to podcasts. But I'm a VR nutcase. I don't care about flat gaming. I listened to the recent Giant Bomb episode. I listened to DLC. But they talk about VR for like a minute here and a minute there. And it's like, nah, I want some real deal VR podcasts, you know? And so I do a search on my iPhone for podcasts, VR. And, oh, VR Roundtable. Eh, I kind of know about VR Roundtable. I don't need to see that. I don't need to listen to those episodes anymore, all right? And there's just not that much out there. You know what I've listened to this week, though? I listened to This Is a Test, the Tested Podcast, Norman Chan, Jeremy Williams, Will Smith. They were all on there. They were talking about the Rift S. They were talking about IPDs. I recommend it. This is a test. Definitely one of my go-tos. I will continue to listen to DLC with Jeff Kanata because he does talk about VR to some degree. To some degree. But what else is there, man? So I'm going to YouTube and I'm basically putting on like MRTV episodes and just hearing the audio. And I'm doing that with like Virtual Reality Oasis. And I did it today with Paradise Decay. Paradise, I heard your uh, raid on the Ruhr. I was, I was listening to that at the very end of my shift. And then I had to bounce out of there. But yeah, Paradise, I need you to do like a new show, bro. So I can listen to your new show every day. But anyway, guys, I will be back tomorrow, Saturday, about noon Pacific. Um, maybe Mame Fan can join us. I haven't talked to him about this. But Mame Fan has had a Pimax headset. I'd like to talk to him about it. So maybe Mame Fan could join us. I don't know if he'll be available. Or on Sunday, maybe he could join us. That would be cool. Because I don't know really what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. But there's always something to get into. But that's going to go ahead and do it. Have a wonderful Friday. Uh, look for me tomorrow at noon. And I'll see you guys then. Take it easy. And later.